Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Tuesday. Wow, it's Tuesday. It's May the 7th already. God is good and is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is worthy to be praised. I'm delighted to greet you in the master's and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. How's everybody? Um, a couple of things I'd like to share. Number one, let me take this opportunity to thank all of those of you who came on Sunday to help the pastor celebrate his 18th pastoral anniversary. You were wonderful. You showed love and affection. I want you to know from the very depths of me, I am grateful. I never expected to see so many people. I'm grateful um, to my cousin, the Reverend Otis Brandon from the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Philadelphia who came and bought 50 of his congregants. It was just absolutely amazing. Then we had a wonderful luncheon in the afternoon. The food was off the chain. Um, the entertainment was great. I thank my son, Isaiah and his band for providing um, music during the dinner hour to our music department. Shout out to Courtney Long and all of those who helped make the music in the morning worship experience wonderful as well as during the luncheon. I am encouraged. Um, as we sang at the closing, I feel like going on, though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. Please know from the very depths of me, as I have opportunity, I'll send personal thank you cards, but please know that I am grateful. As I often say, people don't have to be nice, and when they are nice, they don't have to be nice to you. But you were very kind to this pastor. I want you to know from the very depths of me, I am grateful. All right. Um, more sad news that I am sorry to share. One of our members, Ronald Bertrand, lost his brother, Patrick John Bertrand. And that service is going to be on this Saturday. Um, it is going to be at the French Speaking Baptist Church of Brooklyn on at 209 Claremont Avenue. It's going to be on viewing will be on Saturday. Viewing is from 8 to 9. Service will start at 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, you know, when one of us suffer, we all suffer together. This is his younger brother and don't know exactly what happened, but that's when the home going services are going to be. Um, I'll have this information in the church office. And you know that um, when one of us suffer, we all suffer together. So Salem, let's just do what we know that we do. Um, then also on Saturday, the 11th, there will be a shredding event, community shredding event here at the church that's sponsored by Assemblywoman Ronice Bichette's office and Degna Sigma Theta Sorority. So you can bring up the three bags of um, important documents um, to have shredded. And so I hope that you will um, take advantage of that. Um, and then I want to invite all of you um, to come with me. Well, first of all, Wednesday, I mean, no, I'm ahead of myself. Sunday, of course, Sunday is Mother's Day. So if you have a mother anywhere in the world, um, you want to say Happy Mother's Day. Whether you thought your mother was wonderful or not, without her, you would not be here. We all owe a debt of gratitude to our mothers that we can never repay. So Sunday is Mother's Day. Um, pastor will be in the pulpit um, preaching. And so I hope that you will certainly join us um, for our worship experience on Mother's Day. And then I wanted to share with you that on Wednesday, on Wednesday, um, the, the 15th, and we're going to um, Roof Fellowship Ministries, a good colleague of mine, wonderful friend, um, Pastor Tracy Brown. Um, she founded this church and it's their 25th anniversary. And they have invited us to come and to share with them during that week. Salem, I need you to join me. I need you to come with me um, there. Please call the church office. There won't be any Bible study on Wednesday, on that Wednesday, because we will be going to um, Roof Fellowship Ministries, which is in New Jersey, which is in New Jersey. I'm asking all of you, it's in Plainsville, New Jersey. I hope that you will meet me there. That service will start at 7.30. Salem, let's do what we do. Um, I promised her that we would come and we would be supportive. I know we've been busy. Church hasn't been going out because of the pandemic, but the pandemic has lifted. We now have to fellowship and be a part 
of the community of God. I know that you're going to do that. So that's on Wednesday. So I need you to sign up in the church office. You can call the church office today, putting together a list, um, sign up on Sunday, anytime during the week, um, so that we can make those preparations for our travel. Um, won't you won't you please do that? On this Wednesday, there will be no Bible study. Um, I will be actually leaving um, to travel to North Carolina to Shaw University, where I'm on the Board of Trustees. And they have very important business to take care of, and so I need to be there. I want you to pray for me and then just keep on praying. All right. As a matter of fact, um, we won't have Bible, we won't have noonday prayer. I want you to keep praying. This will be the only noonday prayer for this week. Um, because I'll be out of town. I'll be back in New York on Friday. I'll be traveling. So please forgive me, um, but let's keep on praying. So I'm glad that those of you who are with me today are here and you can get that word to others. I'll have it posted. Let me go ahead quickly now and move to the word and I'll greet you on the back end. We're in Acts chapter one. We're in Acts chapter one. And this is where we will pick up in our Bible study when we um, get there. Um, we talked um, from chapter one um, that this book is book of Acts is written by Luke. Um, if there were John was not in the middle, Luke would be book one and Acts would be book two. Um, Luke talks about the things that Jesus did. Acts is the things that the apostles did. They are now sent out. They're no longer disciples. They are apostles sent out by God. The Bible says in Acts chapter one um, that they gathered together and they were talking to the Lord and that while they were talking to him in verse nine, Acts chapter one, verse nine, that he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from their sight. This is what is called the ascension. When Jesus died, he never died again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, sits on the right hand of the Father, ever making intercessions from you and for you and me. Um, they were looking intently into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go back into heaven. And we still look for the day when the Lord shall return. Now, we know that um, Judas had betrayed Jesus and as a result um, had actually um, committed suicide because whenever you get out of fellowship with Jesus, life can never be the same. God is a forgiving God. And I believe that he had, if he had come back and asked for forgiveness, that he would have been forgiven. But some of us allow the adversary to take over our mind. And so that is what had happened to Judas. So the Bible says, I'm in verse 12 now of Acts chapter one. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. A Sabbath day was walked from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. James, son of Aphias, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up amongst the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the respect he received, with the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas brought a field. There he fell headlong his body burst open, all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so that the field in their language, al-Kedama, that is field of blood, 
For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in it and make another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living amongst us. Beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us, for one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So, they're not, so they nominated two men, John called Barzabas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over his apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. They cast lots, the lot fell to Matthias, so it was added to the 11 apostles. Just want you to know that when there is a vacancy, if you look to the Lord, the Lord has someone waiting to fill that space. And so Matthias took over the space that was left vacant by Judas because Judas had betrayed God through Jesus Christ, and as a consequence, um, did never ask for forgiveness, and therefore he was turned over to a reprobate mind and ended up killing himself. I want to say that without God, we are nothing, that we must always look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. But if you won't serve him, God has others that will be willing to take a stand for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I can tell you that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. We have concluded chapter one of the book of Acts. We will continue um, in the days to come as we look at this wonderful work, the Acts of the Apostles, who are now sent out to carry on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God also calls you and I to carry out this glorious message to men and women and boys and girls who do not know him in the pardon of their sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, let me go ahead and greet some of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Natalie Crawford, thank you. Jay, thank you so much for being here. Sister Deborah Dunham, Sister Ann Hamid, Wanda Roberts, thank you for your gift. Yes, I got it. Um, it was a wonderful time, Jay. I was sorry you wasn't able to be here, but I did get the tickets to your mom. Sister Iris Gaddis Hazel, thank you. Sister Thelma Phillips, thank you. Thank you for all you did. My good friend, Patricia Franklin, how are you? Carmen, how are you? We're going to run soon. Let's talk. Give me a call. I'll call you so we can synchronize our calendar. Sister Emma Jean Brown, it was so good to see you on Sunday. Um, Sharon, thank you, Sharon, for joining in for Noonday Prayer. Sister Shirley my Lord, good to see you. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, dear God, for this time together, we give you prayer. We give you thanks. We know the grass withers and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Thank you, O oh God, for each person on this call, for those who thought it not robbery to spend this time in prayer. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you and we give you glory. Now, God, we pray for the family of Ronald Bertrand as they say goodbye to his younger brother, we believe that you're too wise to make a mistake and too just to do anything wrong. So we pray that you will comfort as only you can. Uh, we pray for others of our congregation that says, sent to the church and say, pray for me. We pray, oh God, for Deacon John Dowell and we pray for Deacon Joseph Reeves. We pray for um, Sister Denise Clark. We pray for Sister Frances Randolphs. We pray for those whose names we cannot call, but you know who they are. We pray for those that are bereft of spirit as they have lost loved ones. We pray, oh God, for those that are sick in their body because we still know that you are a doctor who has never lost a patient. And we pray, oh God, for your peace that passes all understanding. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this place called Salem. Help us ever to be a light in this community, pointing men and women and boys and girls to the one who is the light of the world. Now, God, hear our prayer. Incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Florence Farrell. Good to see you. Thank you, Sister Ann Hamid. 
Good to see you. God bless each and every one of you. So understand that I'm signing off today. I won't be back on for the rest of the week. I'll be traveling tomorrow. Pray for traveling mercies. I will be in the pulpit on Sunday. I look forward um, to sharing Mother's Day with each of you. I should be here um, on Friday, Saturday, um, but I'll be traveling on Friday. Um, I want to thank you again for your kindness, for your remembrance of me for my 18th anniversary. You were marvelous. You did a wonderful, wonderful job in terms of showing your love. Please know that I am so grateful. And please know that um, there's nothing that can happen to any of us that we together with God cannot handle. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out. You're down sitting and you're uprising until we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you all.